See that building on the right there with the sun on it? That is one very important building. G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you. I do hope you are super well. In this video, there's two things I wanna do. Firstly, I wanna show you my visit to Japan HQ, the previous HQ. Nikon have moved into their new state-of-the-art, environmentally friendly HQ in Tokyo, Japan. And I hope to get back there very soon to show you what that looks like. But firstly, I will quickly show you my short visit to HQ back there. That is the Nikon building, and I'm just about to go in there and meet some awesome people and go to the Nikon Museum. Come on, let's go. I simply cannot thank the team enough for the extraordinarily warm welcome they gave me at Nikon HQ Japan. We were able to sit down and talk about all things Nikon. And this is the people that create these astonishing tools that I've used in my career for over three decades. It's a pretty profound moment. And I think what's so special about meeting the people behind these products is it really gives you a deeper understanding of just the realities of bringing this state-of-the-art technology to all of us. This is no easy task. It is so good to see you. I am here at the Nikon Museum in Tokyo, Japan. And here we have an enormous piece of synthetic silica. And this is how you make lenses. This enormous piece here is cut and polished into individual lenses. Now, I'll just quickly show you some of the things that we can see here in the museum. We have a lovely screening room and we can move over here to this enormous history of Nikon lenses and cameras which ends down here at the Z system. And in visiting the Nikon Museum it became pretty quickly apparent to me that Nikon do far more than just cameras. They create lithography machines and so so much more. Now we're going to talk about them and we will come back to the cameras shortly. Over here is the lithography machines, which I think are super exciting. Nikon create the machines, the lithography machines, which cut the wafers that you can see here. And this is how we make silicon for sensors and for chips in our iPhones. This is how it's done. And Nikon make these machines and here is one of the lenses that you will find in these machines. Unbelievable levels of technology. A Nikon make optical materials four different ways. There is synthetic silica, calcium fluoride, eyeline, and optical glass. And when it comes to making optical materials for semiconductor lithography systems, Nikon are specialists. Let's break this down. This means Nikon is creating lithography machines. Lithography machines are basically lasers, lenses, and masks that allow you to etch the pattern of your processor in the most minute detail that you can imagine. And in their marketing material, they're talking about getting to five nanometers, which means they're playing in a very similar space to Apple, who only just recently reached three nanometers. Thus, Nikon creates machines that etches these processes and sensors for our electronic products, whether they are industrial or consumer products. What are the chances that Nikon's machines are etching their own processors and their own sensors? Nikon has created three technologies to get into this space. The first technology is the resolution 
capability of the projection lens. The better the resolving power of the lens, the more intricate a circuit pattern can be when it is optically transferred. To improve lens performance, Nikon manages quality through an integrated system of production from the blending of raw materials for the lens to dissolving, grinding, coating and assembly. The second technology is alignment accuracy. To produce a single semiconductor, photo masks must be placed tens of times and circuit patterns must be repeatedly etched in the exposure process. It is therefore of critical importance that the silicon wafer and photo mask are perfectly aligned each time. Nikon uses multiple sensors to accurately position the photo mask and silicon wafer. The third vital component is throughput. This technology is important when semiconductors are mass produced. Throughput is an indication of productivity, which is expressed by the number of silicon wafers that can be exposed in an hour. To expose the maximum number of semiconductors on a single wafer and boost throughput, Nikon has developed the ability to move the stage that holds the wafer in position at extremely high speeds. By combining these three technologies, Nikon has succeeded in making semiconductor lithography systems that are described as the most precise machines in history. Thus, when we consider lithography machines, it appears that Nikon are right up there when it comes to creating machines of great speed, accuracy and miniaturization. And of course, Nikon's desire to excel does not only sit with lithography machines, but of course we can see it in their sensors and we can see it in their processors. For example, the XP7. The very first time I used the Z9, I could feel all the power that the Z9 and XP7 had to give. Can we conclude that Nikon, who are deeply involved in making lithography slash stepper machines, which of course is how we etch silicon and create sensors and processors, that Nikon are so deeply involved in this area of technology that their very own machines are used to make their processors and sensors. And of course, there is far more to sensors than just the silicon. We've got the micro lenses, the color arrays, the glass that goes between the outside world and the sensor. And then beyond that, we have the technology. How is the sensor information interpreted along with color science? And we know for a fact that Nikon designs all of that for their sensors. And that includes the technology which is required to create our digital cameras today from their very base elements, the silicon, the wafer, and then all the technology that comes after that. Nikon are clearly deeply involved in all areas of the creation of their digital cameras. The Nikon Museum is full of all sorts of artefacts. We have one of the first lenses ever made by Nikon actually for a Canon camera. And another just ridiculous lens is this 1200mm f11. And you can see how massive it is as I think it's sitting there on a D850. Absolutely epic would you believe it? A 180 to 600 millimeter lens. This shows that this current version is not the first ever made. This one is from 1982 and was an F8. The current one is a 5.6 to 6.3. Some of Nikon's first ever rangefinder cameras, which are beautiful. This is an extraordinarily rare fish eye lens. You must catch the greys of Westminster, who took the lens out for a spin in London. I'm not sure if every lens that Nikon ever made is available to see. They certainly have an enormous number of lenses here right now. And of course, now we have the new museum, which may well be even bigger. I do hope to get there soon. We're also able to see here how Nikon created lenses from calcium fluoride. And this was a non-precise process of breaking the calcium into chunks. Another thing that's really interesting as part of this display is the fact that today Nikon supplies this glass to other 
manufacturers. That's the synthetic silica glass. Now, that could be used for all sorts of applications. This is a gorgeous museum, and if you ever find yourself in Japan, you should absolutely get yourself to the new Nikon Museum. I could not go past this absolutely gorgeous Japan Grand Prix edition of the FA, the FA Gold. Magnificent. Then we have another astonishing camera like this one here, which is an F3 with an extra large film mag created for NASA. Also, this 800mm F8, and now we have, of course, the new Z 800mm, which is a 6.3, but probably something like half the size. This classic from 1996, the Nikkor 300mm F 2.8, highly regarded, highly loved. And of course, the Nikonos 5. This is a camera I always wanted to get and never got round to it. The ubiquitous Nikon FM, which led to the FM2, which of course was the inspiration for the ZF and ZFC. The Nikomat, a camera that I never really knew existed, came out in 1976. I think it's obviously based on me. The Nikomat. And here is a range of Nikon's early compact digital cameras and digital cameras. The Nikon E3 from 1998 and the E3S. I never knew that either of them existed. And where the D-series DSLRs began for Nikon, the D1. And as Nikon states, this was a revolution for image quality, size, speed and price. And look, just so many compact cameras created by Nikon. The D1H, which was a high speed camera at the time shooting at 5 frames per second. And of course, the Nikon D2X with the 300mm 2.8, the D2X was my first pro digital DSLR. This is where it all started for me, the Nikon D70 in 2004. I absolutely love that camera and it began something new. Here we have a cross section of the D3 and of course we all know about the D3 moment. This for me was a very clear step in the fact that digital had now surpassed film from a quality perspective. But there was something that Nikon did with the D3. They created a sensor that somehow felt not digital and more like film. The wonderful Nikon DF Black Gold Edition. Gorgeous. Who wouldn't want one of those? Well, we will finish where it all started for Nikon. Behind me are some of the first cameras that they ever made. I've had the most brilliant trip here to the Nikon Museum. I have met some of the amazing Nikon team. I'd like to say a massive thank you to everybody that helped me get here. It is awesome. And I just have to say a really big thank you to Nikon Australia, Nikon Singapore, Nikon Japan, and you, the audience. Without you, we're not here. And I I kind of can't believe I'm here in Tokyo, Japan. It's, it's unbelievable. And when I started my photographic journey 35, 36, 37 years ago, Got my first FM in 1992 and my F5 in 1997. <laughs> I never dreamt that I would come to the home of Nikon. And there it is over my shoulder. Unbelievable. Arigato Nikon.